I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. We have a tips and tricks guide that you can now download from our website that tells you all of the things that we look for when we're looking at a steel boat. So obviously we bought this steel boat, but before we bought this steel boat we looked at quite a few boats and we have helped quite a few people look at their own steel boats and decide whether or not to buy them. And I've also created printable sheets that you can bring with you when you're going to look at a steel boat to help make sure that you look at all the areas that may be problem areas and hopefully help you to avoid making a purchase that <laughs> might end you up in a shed like we have been. So you can download that on our website for $25 Canadian or you can join us for, on Patreon for $5 a month and get that guide along with any other guides we create for free. Here is the gearbox and the tiller arm and link and the motor and first gear reduction. So that motor sits on top of this shaft here, drives this, which drives that. So now we get to try and figure out how to mount this in here. What's going on down here? Just trying to figure out this autopilot. The way that I wanted to install it isn't going to work out, which sucks because I had taken all the measurements for that. Well, this motor that's up here or down there or wherever sits on top of here and it's quite tall mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it won't fit between. I wanted to bolt this upside down to the bottom of here. Oh, and it won't fit underneath? And it won't fit. And I can't remember why I'd measured it that way. It all comes in metric measurements, and I don't have any metric measuring utensils. Devices. So, I converted it over. Yeah. And apparently something got lost in translation. So, I have to figure out a different way to mount it. Mm. Yeah, we were going to put it like over here sort of, but I really don't want to. Like, it's pretty simple to mount this thing in the space that we have, but then we lose all of our usable space. I thought you could mount it like on the other side there, down there. So. Like we could mount it out here yeah. somewhere and have this all on an angle and that's still a possibility but I'm just trying to figure out by looking at this thing you can put the arm on different ways it doesn't necessarily matter where it is because there's no sensor in the motor the sensor is literally a, like a bolt-on sensor you'd normally have that bolts to this arm I was just wondering if instead of having it swing this way, if I had it, the arm sticking out. There's my Allen key right here. Like if I had this arm like this. Then all the way around. Oh, underneath the... Underneath here. Yeah. Hard to see. Why couldn't I just spin this guy around? because I need a 127 millimeter offset between this shaft and this shaft. So this would have to be about here, 
which would actually work out really well. I think that's what we led we were led to last time. Because this is our second time trying to fit this, but last time then we were like, we gotta move a drain and then we replaced the whole aft end of the boat pretty much. So Yeah, now if that motor fits right here, that's the other thing. Well, that's really, really close to where that would be sitting there. It would be like more inboard. But basically right there. Is there some blocks of wood up there? That would be pretty close to where that would sit. Keep that motor. Yep. But I guess if I took this and moved it this way. Oh yeah, right. I don't see why I can't. All the cords and everything can connect properly still with the motor over there. Well, yeah, because I just have to wire it in. Like, right. Just have to run cords. You have to put the motor there and make sure it fits just in case. Well, I have to check. Let's see. Uh, distance has changed. It has. But I am really close, anyways. Somewhere there. Yeah, the motor would just sit right here. Like that. Cool, yeah. So, as long as I can have it drive the way I need it to drive, I don't really see a problem with it. Other than it's kind of hidden underneath and whatever else, but. It's boat life. Yeah, I think I just have to flip the pin on on this guy here so that it's upside down. I have to figure out if the sensor's going to work. because I can't... Oh! <laughs> because that jams up. Can't wait to fix that. Because I don't actually know how far it's going to go. So the motor's supposed to spin when you when that turns. What's that? Well, you had the motor on there, and then you move. The motor the spins motor. this. Oh, okay. And that so moves motor, all of this. The motor won't spin, but the like it the bolts onto here, on, right? Yeah, and then the motor, like the whole thing, won't spin like it just did. It'll just spin that bit. Yeah. Okay. I just don't want to take this tape and these keys off because I don't want to lose them. Yeah, fair enough. I just wanted to make sure that the motor wasn't going to be running into the arm, but that wouldn't make any sense. So, Logan is still working on the autopilot, and in the meantime, I'm going to do the last bit of grinding that needs to be done on the deck. There was a few small spots that we had to fill with weld along the deck after we finished the bulwarks, and they still have weld on them that's like above where we want it. So I gotta grind those down. And then that should be the last of the grinding on the deck, really. We have the autopilot to do in that aft locker, and then we got 
bracing pieces to put back in that we cut out so that we could fill holes. And then we have to put vents in and I think, I think that's it for welding. Maybe some more stuff with the solar arch, but that's exciting that we're moving forward like that. And then sandblasting and then painting and then hopefully the water. Fingers crossed. Right now, I'm gonna build a basic bracket for the autopilot, and I'm just gonna follow the same shape, make a square, cut the corners off, and that'll be the bracket, and then I'll figure out how to attach that to the boat itself. Uh, the autopilot body is aluminum, so we're gonna have to make a steel bracket, weld it into the boat, and paint it and then we'll have to have some kind of a washer between the steel and the aluminum. Uh, I will get going on that. I've got I think exactly the right amount of 3 16 flat bar and I'm gonna build the bracket out of flat bar and then we'll figure out some gussets and other brackets afterwards. building the support gussets for the autopilot bracket and it's really hard to show you what's going on in there because it's just it's too tight and it's just a bunch of boring measuring stuff so I'll show you what I did after but I'm just gonna make the brackets now been struggling pretty hard with this autopilot mount because it is a very weird shape and it has to fit in a very specific spot so I finally I think I have all the pieces made and blasted and ready to weld into place I just have to clean off a bit of paint and um, yeah tack some stuff in place and take some measurements this autopilot puts out quite a bit more force than the linear actuators or the hydraulic ones 
for this size. So it, the bracing has to be to keep it all from twisting and there's nothing flat to weld it down to so it has to be braced to certain points. So I've just tried to carry the load over the biggest area possible. So instead of just welding it to the center line, I've got a bracket over here that connects these two ribs together and then I have it notched in and it doesn't look like much but those notches are going to keep this ang these angle iron ribs here from flexing so I'll just have this welded around like that um, and it'll put the load more directly into trying to force them straight back or forwards or whatever mostly because I don't really have a lot of surface area to weld to, I just have this two inches here. So even though it's on a diagonal so it's a bit longer, it's still only like maybe three inches. And this isn't right down so I can only weld one part of this without making a huge one inch block, one by two inch solid chunk of steel, which didn't sound like a very good idea. And then this one being angled, I'm only going to get a weld on the back side of it. So I put another brace under this end, going down to the center line and the rib. And hopefully that'll be enough to keep this thing from twisting itself apart. Fingers crossed. So now I have to tack all the braces kind of in place and then take the clamp off, fit the autopilot onto here, put the arms all back on, take all my measurements, make sure I'm still right where I need to be, and then tack the main bracket on. So it's a bit of a process, but it's the only way to get it in here accurately. And then I have this little guy that needs to be welded together and put up here. For the sensor. Yep, and that'll be for the rudder angle sensor. Fun story, I got about halfway through that job of using the die grinder to clean up the fair leads and then the die grinder bit literally flew out of the die grinder, hit me in the mask and then promptly bounced off the boat and down <laughs> the drain, flew down the drain and into the dirt and we cannot find it. So I'm switching jobs because Logan needs a plate made and I'm going to make a plate to go into that whole concoction that he's got going on back there. But yeah, we're down a bit and I just didn't feel like putting another one in either so I'm pretty excited about switching jobs. So let's get to making a plate to strengthen that center line and keep everything in one piece. The drawing I was given was this. Yeah? He said make an eye. So that's what he's getting. I mean, his drawing, the dimensions are a little bit off, but this is based on his dimensions. So now I just have to blast it and then give it to him and then he can weld it on. Right, Max? Max agrees. Right, Shmurfopolis? It's that time of night that he likes so very much, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But we're not going home yet. Sorry, bud. 
Not yet. No time yet. Well, it's in there. <laughs> that was a lot. I think that is going to be that for the autopilot mount. The next thing is uh, to mark the bottom tiller arm where it needs to be on the rudder shaft. And then take that all apart and try and drop the rudder shaft out. <laughs>